Hey, how's it going YouTube? Welcome back to another episode here on the GS Footage Garage. So today I'm going to be working on porting a LT1 Intec manifold. Um, this one is off of a 2018 Camaro SS. Uh, it's the same Intec manifold on the Corvettes and on the Camaros with the LT1 engine. I get a lot of uh, a lot of questions on you know how do I port and things like that. Uh, G brought it to my attention that a lot of you guys are asking on the channel uh, how to port and things like that. So I'm going to try to make a video on how I port Intec manifolds and my ideas and my logic behind it um, and take it for what it's worth guys I'm not a professional it's just merely my opinions and, and how I've been doing it for a very long time um, this is how I learned how to port you know as a as a as a kid you know I started porting back in the day and then uh, I just kind of kept the same principles for a long time I'm going to show you guys the, the tools that I use and it's basic um, backyard stuff nothing fancy um, I use you know Harbor Freight uh, air grind air die grinders and um, this one is a little Dremel from Walmart that I picked up a long time ago you know assortment of cartridges and things like that but I'll go over all that stuff right now um, but like I said it's, I'm not a professional so all you professional porters don't beat me up I'm just simply doing this video um, Highlighting some key points on the things that I do when I port into manifolds um, Merely for entertainment purposes only so with that being said guys I have an illustration to kind of help people understand the way that my logic behind porting into manifolds um, And throttle bodies, so I'll show you guys I try to do a really good description on this whiteboard, so I'll show you guys what I have going on okay, So if you guys see here I have a uh, basically the transition between the snout and the throttle body um, what you want is to port the same size back of your throttle body to the same size back of your snout because you want your your throttle body and snout to float very well and you don't want no obstructions right you want to increase velocity right so this is the way you want to do it just pretty simple keeping it simple here what you don't want to do obviously is this is how it is from factory your throttle body is going to be a little bit smaller and your snout is going to be a little bit bigger so you're giving up a little bit of power here right you're giving up a little bit of power here but it's not as detrimental your stock throttle body is actually uh your stock throttle body your snout is actually not as bad as being over ported um in my opinion because when your your throttle body is over ported um, so let's say you, you you port your throttle body or you send it out and you got to port it and it's super hogged out from the back Right, so now your throttle body is bigger, right? So now you're flowing more air and your snout is smaller So now you have air that's gonna hit this lip here and it's gonna do this right and Now you created turbulence right here. So now you're slowing the air into the snout So sometimes when you over port it's not a good thing and same thing goes to your head and your runner you never want to over port your runner on your intake manifold um, into the head. You want it to keep it, you know, laminar. Have it flow good, no obstructions, clean everything up. But never over port the runner. Never hog out your runner larger than your head. Because again, you will have this step right here that you created by over porting the runner and now you have created turbulence. So if you just try to not get too greedy with it, and basically port match the end of the throttle body to the snout you have great velocity and same thing goes to your um to your head and your runner don't over port just shoot for port matching and then uh and that's where you're going to get the best success i believe um so quick rundown this is the principle that i use of course when we're going for max performance we want to port the if you have like heads and things like that, of course you want to have the larger head and the larger runner and now you're going to flow a whole ton of air. But usually people don't have heads and things like that. So when porting for a bolt-on car, try to match your runner to your head. And that's the way I do it, guys. So take it for what it's worth. Uh, with that being said, let's start this video and let's get porting. Okay, guys. So one of the first things I do before I start porting is I always make sure that I have the proper PPE. Um, whether it be safety glasses or respiratory masks. Um, because you want to take care of yourself, right? You don't want to create a you don't want to make your passion and your hobbies uh, Bring you some hardship down the road, right? We do these hobbies to 
to have mental health and, and have a good time and you know so we don't want to shoot ourselves in the foot down the line so um, I always use a good respiratory mask um, this is a 3M N95 um, I'm down to only like one left because of, of all this um, things happening in the world these days these things are uh, a high demand so I'm gonna be using this one to port my intake manifold the, the tools that I use to port I'm gonna I'm gonna show you guys a quick glance um, and a quick description but as I'm porting I'll show you what, how I use them okay basically I have these uh, carbide bits they're long shanks so you can get deep into the deep into the runner deep into the snout deep into the runners so they're very effective Here's the uh, smaller, um, shorter ones. These are also uh, very effective for some of the closer uh, contact stuff. Uh, I use multiple assortments of different um, bits that I have collected over the years. And um, these all help me with uh, getting that desired contours and desired shapes that I feel would um, help my antique manifold flow more. Um, I use an assortment of different cartridges ranging from uh, coarse to fine and this is mostly um, to you know remove material uh, same thing as this these are merely used for uh, uh, removing material um, then I use an assortment of different uh, flapper wheels and these help me remove some of the little bumps and things like that um, any little crater help me level that out um, I have an assortment of cross buffs um, and they all have like a, I have long shanks and short shanks for them to get deep in there um, you know cutting wheels more cross buffs and all this stuff will range from coarse to fine and it'll help me get that, that really nice uh, finish that's basically it guys um, I use these uh, this, I get this from a uh, Harbor Freight they're a uh, Pittsburgh telescoping gauge and I basically just use these to ensure that I have the proper, um, that I have the same size runner on each manifold. And I'll show you guys that now. So basically, let's say uh, I port this to the desired size, right? I'll try to do this with one hand here. Um, let's say, let's say there, right? Ah. So then you lock it in place, right? I'm trying to do this with one hand here. So you lock it in place and then you would basically use this as your guide to make sure that the runner is the same all the way down you get your size everything the same and each one is the same because what you don't want to do is have one runner larger than the other everything has to be the same so you use a little tool like this now this is not probably what professionals use this is just something that i picked up um and it worked so i just ran with it but that's basically what i use i use this uh one quarter inch air die grinder got it at harbor freight super old uh, still works and then I use uh, regular Dremels for the smaller bits um, this one is a I don't remember what it was uh, I put tape over it because it broke but it still works um, but I got it at Walmart this thing's super old it's probably 10 years old use a compressor and basically that's it okay so that was a quick rundown on some of the tools that I have and like I said it's just a bunch of collected stuff you really just starting off and want to get the job done probably a a cartridge kit from summit like this will get the job done um nothing too fancy you know just something like this with with coarse and uh fine uh, cartridges will get the job done um this stuff i just collected and it helps you get that that nice end result product that, that really uh a really contoured uh intake manifold right so um Nevertheless, guys, let's keep going, and I'll show you guys some uh, some things that I do when porting. Okay, guys, so here what we have here is the untouched, unported snout. Okay, so the first thing I like to do is I like to cut this air tube out, and I basically just cut it here, and then make sure I contour it, blend it into the side, making sure that I leave nothing sticking out because it will be an obstruction as the air comes in, right? So we want to make sure that this is cut out and contour to the to the to the intake manifold um i also uh there's a lip back here it's pretty uh pretty deep and usually this is my guide that i use to on all my manifolds i bring them down 
that quarter inch, which is pretty, uh, it's like a quarter inch, maybe a little less, but um, I bring them all the way down. This car is gonna have a, a larger throttle body, so I'm gonna go really, really paper thin to the, to the gasket out here, um, just because this manifold is gonna be made it with a larger 95 millimeter throttle body, which is, it's gonna have, we're gonna have to push it to the limit. We're gonna have to bring it all the way out here. But I'm gonna try to re retain the same um, design. Um, I'm not just gonna do a big crazy hole. I'm gonna try to keep the same flow of it, just making it larger, removing obstructions, removing this tube. And then I'm gonna try to go in uh, very deep in here, all the way up here, and just enlarge the whole um, surface area of the intake manifold all the way in here, as far as I could. Okay, so this is a goal for here. This is the goal for the snout. Let's go over to the runners. Okay, so here we go. Here's the runners, okay? So when you see the runners, you see that there's a, a lot of overlapping material. You see that right there? Okay, a lot of overlapping material, right? So this is flashing uh, material that can be removed. Um, it's overlapping material. You can basically um, remove all this material and um, increase the volume inside of the runner, right? Uh, so we're gonna basically remove that, remove that flashing and carry it all the way out. Here we go. There's a little dimple down here that I like to get rid of. That one right there. Uh, and you have to go basically all around. There's, a, there's these, these steps all around the intake, all around the runner that you need to remove. So, and every runner is gonna be slightly different. Some will have more overlapping than others. Some will be very bad. So, here, look at this one. This one has a lot of material we can remove. So, basically that's it. Here's a perfect runner with flashing. There's a lot of uh, room for improvement there. So that's what we're shooting for when porting the throttle body and porting the runners. Not get too greedy with it. Keep the same um, design of it. Uh, I'm not an engineer. Uh, so GM designed them this way for a reason. So I keep the same um, design. I just remove any obstructions, any any bumps, anything that basically um, is going to slow the air coming in. Um, and I also try to enlarge everything equally to make sure that we have a you know like a baby MSD kind of kind of thing, right? Um, so yeah, and that's what the runners look like. Um, definitely some uh, some room for improvement there. Uh, just make everything laminar, carry it out, the same uh, uh, volume on all the runners, uh, measure them, make sure they're good, and basically that's it. So with that being said guys, let's port. So how I like to start porting these is by removing the air tube that runs across the, the snout. Um, I use a spiral uh, router type drill bit. It seems to be uh, the easiest thing to use when cutting that tube because it's very hard to get like a little circle disc in there or anything like that. So these things were pretty good for that. It's probably, this one's probably not intended for plastic, um, but it, it gets the job done. So this is what I use. Um, okay, so now that I have cut off the tube, I'm gonna go in there and remove the little lip sticking out um, with a, Steel carbide bid. I know I'm a rebel. I'm not kidding. No, but uh, I'm gonna use uh, one of these because these remove a lot of material very quickly, um, and we have a pretty uh, thick lip in there that I need to remove. Uh, I'll show you guys what the end product looks like. Okay, so there it is. There's no lip behind it. It's basically um contouring and we're still shaping guys but i wanted to point out i like to get rid of see this bump right here this step right here i literally get rid of it well not a hundred percent but i literally i bring this lip significantly significantly down um so it could uh flow very well so i'll show you what this and this looks like right now in a bit Now what I did here, I used um, I used a long shank uh, carbide bit, 
and I got it in all the way back here, all the way around, all the way in the back, all the way this. And I brought this uh, this huge step that was here. I got I, I basically shaped it all the way out. Um, now right now this is the rough stages, the rough stages. I'm sorry. Um, so this is where I do all the rough shaping, get all the all the stuff I want off, the big steps out. Um, and I'm going to continue to do this all the way across. You see this dimple right here? This dimple is this one right here. So we're going to try to get, we're going to try to shave this down as much as we can, but we got to keep in mind there's a dimple here. So you won't be able to get rid of it 100%, but you can help it be less of an, of an obstruction by bringing it down a little bit. Okay, so I got rid of the tube, the big step that's on the right side, and I shaved down the little dimple on the left side. So now what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to start enlarging this snout. Okay guys, so I just finished shaping the snout to where I want it. I removed quite a bit of material, I mean a lot, a lot of it. Um, and this is the rough stages of it. This is still my uh, carbide uh, bits. Uh, these are designed for metal so they, they, they get through plastic like this. So I removed a ton of material from the snout area um, and I shaped it to where I want. I, re I minimized uh, most of the 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 obstructions any bumps anything like that um any overlapping material i grinded it down um basically just gave it some really li nice smooth lines um but now i'm left with a really rough snout so now i'm going to go in with my cartridge rolls which also remove material and go through the whole process all over again so remember now i'm done with these guys okay for the snout all this is going to be repeated in the runners so it's a lot of hard work to do these things um but, uh, but yeah, just, if you go faster, you know, it's pretty rewarding because, um, you know, you do it yourself and, you know, good elbow work, right? It takes you back to the, the hot rodding days before everything was just basically buying parts online. It takes you back to those days where you actually had to, you know, get creative and things like that. Okay, so let me show you guys what this looks like now. We basically got... Yeah, I'll try this. How's that? Okay, there you go. We got in the snout pretty far in there, as pretty pretty far as we can get in there. Um, cleared up any obstructions here. Look at that. Basically, uh, basically enlarged this thing pretty good. I just ran out of battery, but uh, this is what the rough stages look like. And just for a comparison here, before this thing dies on us, this is not even done yet. But look at this, guys. How about that, huh? How about this? We already got a huge snout. And as you guys saw in the video, um, I carried it as far as I could. Let's see if I get some pretty good lighting in here. I got pretty far in there, as long as far as I could, on the top and on the bottom. And there's a lot more material to go because we have to go through the cartridge rolls now, right? Now we have to go get rid of all those little craters, all those bite marks that these carbide bits did um but now we have to go through it again so let me put this on the charger and i'll grab the cartridge bits so i'm going to start off with a very uh coarse uh cartridge roll this is going to help me smooth everything out um i'm going to use a a long shank to get pretty deep in here i'm going to try to um surpass um what i did with the with the this bad boy right here right uh, the goal is to just leave it so smooth and such a beautiful transition that um, you can't even tell that it's been ported right that's what well you want to see it larger but you don't want to leave like like a big porting and then you know like basically you don't want to leave your porting 
large like this and leave a step, right? So you want to blend it. You want you want that airflow to flow. So I'm going to get this coarse um, cartridge roll and I'm going to go past what I already did and then bring it all the way back out again. So here comes another hour or so. And then basically this is going to, we're going to go from cartridge rolls, we're going to go from coarse to fine and then we'll move over to our, our flapper wheels and so forth. So let's get, let's get to this. Okay guys, I just finished going through different um, grids of cartridge rolls to give me this finish and as I mentioned, I went deeper into the intake manifold with the cartridge rolls um, to give us that really smooth transition making sure I don't have a step. And what I mean by step is, let's say this is where the, the roof of the intake manifold is. I don't want to over port and have it here and then just leave it there. I want to make sure that I I give it a smooth transition out. So make sure there's no step. Nowhere where the air is going to hit and create turbulence. Super smooth. That's the goal. Let me show you guys how it looks like after the cartridge rolls. Okay. So basically this is what we're looking at right now. And this is with cartridge rolls. Not bad, huh? Not too shabby. Pretty good. You guys are uh, pretty pleased. I'm Hope so, I hope so. So, okay. So now we have pretty good shapes, but I don't know if you guys can see that. There's a couple of little craters on the walls. You guys see that, the little craters? Kind of hard to see. Okay, we're gonna get rid of those by using a flapper wheel. Okay, so let's move over to some flapper wheels and that's gonna come in there and shave that off along with some more material. And we're gonna have a huge, I mean, look at this thing. We get my hand in here. So uh, we'll call this bad boy the baby MSD. <laughs> And for this task, I'm going to switch over to my little trusty Dremel, my faithful warrior that's been with me for a long time. Little flapper wheel. Get, get rid of all those uh, little craters. You won't see them once I'm done. Okay guys, the same thing. You're gonna wanna work your way up from uh, coarse to fine on the flapper wheels too. The more material you wanna remove, the more uh, aggressive the craters you left are there. You wanna use a, a more aggressive uh, flapper wheel. I don't have very many little craters. Um, I did do a quick pass with the 60. Um, that's actually pretty rough. But I'm uh, moving up to an 80 um, just for some other little areas and then I should be good to uh, to start using a cross buff and then you guys are you guys are gonna like that. But let me finish up with the flapper wheel. Okay guys, so I'm basically done using the flapper wheel. Um, I'll show you guys what the end product looks like after using the flapper wheels and you guys are gonna really like this. Let's see, let's look for the GoPro. GoPro, where are you? Right there, all right. Huh? Not too bad, huh? Not too bad. That's the kind of finish you guys want. Okay, but look at those transitions. You want that super, uh, super uh, nice contours. You see that? All right. Look at that, guys. You guys gotta take pride in what you guys do. See that? Go in pretty deep. Look at that. Okay. So once you got rid of all those little imperfections, all those little craters and stuff like that, it kind of give you that nice leveled um, snout. Once it looks, once you're happy with it, um, let's move over to some cross buffs. Cross buffs. Now usually this is what you'll get once you like, um, let's say you pay for a port intake manifold from like certain companies or whatever, this is what they're gonna send you. They, they usually just port them. Uh, what I like to do is I kind of like to like kind of polish the plastic a little bit, um, give it that nice kind of factory look in a way, but um, it's a little over, um, a little redundant I guess you could say, but hey, um, gives it a little uh, uniqueness to you know, our ported intakes when we when we do do them for you know a car who's that's gonna get worked on here or something we we kind of port these for just like low key you know <laughs> we don't really uh like uh how can I say these market these we don't we just kind of do them for ourselves and you know some a couple friends so um, we try to 
try to leave a little mark on them. So if we ever run across them again, uh, we're like, hey, that's my Antic Manifold that I poured it, you know, kind of thing. So it's pretty cool. But um, yeah, before I keep rambling off, let's uh, let's use some cross buffs. And what I mean by cross buffs is these little guys. And these little guys, um, just because they're cross buffs, um, don't uh, don't take them lightly. They're pretty uh, they're pretty aggressive, um, and they come in various grits too. I'm gonna start with this really aggressive one, and then I'll work my way down to some fine ones. All right. I'm going to use the die grinder for this one. As you guys can see, my shanks are, for these guys, they, they come shorter. So I try my best with the long shank and the cartridge rolls to go real fine on the cartridge rolls to give me that uh, as smooth as possible finish back here. But um, this part is going to be super polished up with these guys. So let's keep on rolling. Let's keep on rolling. Okay guys, so as you guys saw, I used some cross buffs, and then after that cross buff, I used this little flapper wheel with the little little buff pad on it. I get these at Harbor Freight actually, I score, I, I ran into them and I was like, man, these things will probably work really good to polish like the plastic and stuff and porting. Um, and sure, I give them a shot and they work. Uh, I just finished doing this intake manifold with them, and uh, you guys are going to really like how that looks. I'm still going to go over um deeper into the manifold polishing it up i'm gonna have to use these little guys these little cross buffs and they come in different grits also you guys can see them here um because these will allow me to get you know deeper in the back and stuff with the with the smaller uh, dremel but um basically this is what it looks like uh this is what the finished product is going to basically look like this, this is the type of finish that i shoot for um as you guys saw i just to recap I cut the tube off, I um, level down any uh, steps, any um, parts of the intake manifold that were sticking out um, and just kind of knocked them all the way down and once I got that desired shape, I went over and I removed some of the, the bumps and things like that in the design of the manifold, kind of bring them down a little bit, just kind of increase that velocity and then I just kind of poured it as deep as I could all the way out. You know, and just remove as, as much material as I found um, safe to do because remember, these things are not that thick. So, pulled out as much material as I could, and it left me with this type of product, product, um, finished product. Uh, I started off with uh, just to recap, I, start, I started with some very aggressive uh, carbide bits. Um, these things remove a ton of material. Mine are designed for metal, I, that's all I have, so this is what I use. Um, and they kick ass on plastic i mean they just storm through it so i really like these um i use them in i have shorties and i have long ones these allow me to get pretty deep in here um after that i move over to a um a short shank and a short shank with a with cartridge rolls and these cartridge rolls uh help me shave down um all those bite marks that those um um, diamond bits made all those all those chunks and that mass material they remove it comes with the with the price right it leaves this thing it leaves the intake manifold super marred um, but it makes a quick time of removing a lot of material that's why I use them um, and it helps me shape up everything really quickly you have to be very careful with them because uh, they will go through the intake manifold I mean these things they're they're aggressive um, so I use these guys in different um, cartridge sizes right because they come in different grits. As you saw there, um, these cartridge rolls come in different um, uh, grits, right? You can get a very coarse one, uh, like a 60, and you can move your way all the way up to like 120, which is a, a lot finer cartridge roll, give you a smoother finish. Um, so then I use those, I work them down, all the way down. Um, I ensure not to leave um, a step from what I poured it. Remember, you don't want to do more harm. You want to make it um, better, right? So if you pour it here, don't leave a step. You know, don't leave a step. Smooth it out, you know? Come in with the longer shank and blend it out. Blend it out, make sure there's no turbulence, okay? So then I did the, the cartridge rolls. I worked my way down different cartridge rolls so I got the desired shape, right, and finish. 
And then once I did that, I moved over to my flapper wheels. And same thing, I have shorties and I have long ones. Um, and these come in various grids too. Uh, they come, uh, you know, an 80. Um, these are 60s right here. So they come in different um, uh, grids. And depending how bad you left the crater there, you might have to go uh, a very aggressive flapper wheel to get rid of them, right? So I, this is what I use as my technique. Um, and then after that, after my flapper wheels, um, you could essentially be done there. But uh, if you use like a, like a cross buff like I did, um, and I like to start every step from coarse to fine all over again, um, because I take out a little bit more material too. So, um, so I use a little cross buffs and same thing. You get the point of it. These little cross buffs go on this end here and uh, get rid of all those little, uh, kind of polish everything up, remove a little bit of extra material. Um, and once I have that, the desired shape, everything looks like it's flowing really nicely. Um, I kind of finish up with these little, uh, these flapper slash buff wheel. Uh, I just found these and I, I gave them a shot. They seem to work. Um, they give me a real nice finish. And following that, I use tiny little cross buffs to get into all the little nuckies and touch ups and stuff like that. They give me a real nice finish. I still have a little bit of more work to do on this intake to give it uh, pristine. Um, and I still have to work on the runners. Um, the runners, it's a little difficult to see and it's hard to see um, um, what you're doing in here, especially on camera. But as I pointed out in the beginning of the video, try to um, follow that concept, remove uh, uh, steps, remove uh, uh, obstructions, make sure it flows well, um, measure, make sure they're all the same. So that's all gonna, that's what you do with the runners. I'm not gonna vlog that guys, because this video is getting pretty long and G's a little bit of, in need of some content. So I'm gonna get this video to him pretty quickly. So let's go over here and, uh, and see the, the end result of this snout. And I hope it gives you guys a little bit of uh, insight on how I do things. So let's come over here. Okay, so this is the end result. This is where we're at, guys. This is what we started off with. Look at how much material we removed, guys. See that? It's massive, guys. Massive. So, we got basically what we wanted. This thing is huge, you can fit my whole hand in here. Look at that. Okay. Um, we got a little bit of work left to do on it. We gotta touch up some areas. Um, but, but what I really wanna show you guys is that finish. That almost factory-like finish. So that's what you get, guys, when you follow the steps that I do. Something similar to this. Um, yep, that's it. That's where we're at guys, that's where we're at. Alright guys, and then I want to close out the video without showing you guys the end result of within the runners. And I'm pretty sure you guys are going to be very uh, pleased with the way they look. So I'm excited to show you guys the end result. All right, guys, with that being said, that concludes today's video. Uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and we'll catch you guys on the next episode.